I just found the simplest, most annoying bug in my code that might have cost me thousands of dollars over the last couple of months. So I'll show you what that bug was and talk about a few different things that I could have done to prevent that and not have to go through all this hassle and heartache. All right, for starter context, I am a full-time content creator. So how do I make money as a full-time content creator? Well, I make some on YouTube ads, although not very much. I make a lot from sponsored content. I do some consulting. And one big piece of this is creating my own paid content like courses. So I recently launched an Astro course a few months ago and it's done pretty well, but the way that you drive people to these courses and the way that you make money from courses is having them on your newsletter. That's the crucial thing. As a content creator, your newsletter is one of your most valuable assets. So if you're not already subscribed, check out my website, scroll to the bottom, subscribe. Anyways, I got this email from somebody who was nice enough to send me some feedback. He sent me a screenshot of the newsletter and when he tried to subscribe, it showed subscribe failed. Please try again. Now this is my custom logic that tries to handle the subscription in the front end so it can display error messages and feedback messages, et cetera. So then I looked in his message and it said that there was an unexpected token trying to parse JSON with a 404 response. So this was the first opportunity for me to look at my code. Now, I had just recently updated from Astro 2 actually to 4. And one of the big things that changed was for API endpoints, they went from lowercase like this to all uppercase. And that's a requirement in Astro 3, I believe, and then 4 as well. So I went and updated my site from Astro 2 to 3 without testing, obviously. And little did I know that it was hitting a 404 because it didn't actually find this endpoint because this was, uh, this was lowercase and not uppercase as it should be. So that led me to then dive into my code to find the next actual really important bug. And I am ashamed to say that I found out this bug has been there for eight months. Now this means that I've been missing out on eight months worth of subscribers on my website, which those people are the people that I market my paid courses to, which means I've missed out a ton. So I posted this on Twitter about what this bug is. You can look at the screenshot on the page and take a quick look. I'm sure you'll find it really quickly. But before I tell you what it is, let me know in the comments what you think it is. All right, so this became pretty obvious to a lot of people, but I have an extra bracket inside of this ES6 template literal string here. So I pass in the newsletter ID to the newsletter that I'm trying to subscribe the user to, and then I had this extra bracket. This meant that the request that was being sent to the backend had an invalid newsletter ID this entire time. Now, people in the comments on the post had tons of things that I could have and should have done better to prevent this, but there's a couple of things I wanna call out first. Many people reference that the IDE should have caught this or the linter should have caught this, but in reality, the IDE couldn't fix this and a linter couldn't catch this. And do you know why? You can let me know in the comments below as well. I'll pause. Okay, so inside of here, because this is a template literal string, that means that the IDE has no concept of what I'm putting into a string. What I put into a string can be anything and a valid or a curly bracket is a valid piece of a string. Now, had I messed up the syntax for variable interpolation with dollar sign and then bracket, it would have caught that, it would have thrown an error, I would have seen it with my linter and my IDE. But because this is just a mistyped thing inside of this string, there's no help that I could have gotten from my IDE. Now, the only thing that I do get is the fact that this is highlighted yellow as the rest of the actual text of the string. So there is a tiny call out there, but there's nothing that it could have done to actually throw an error and make me go back and look at this. Now, people also looked at just this code snippet and they recommended that I surround my fetch request with a try catch. Well, I actually am already doing that. And you can see that I have the try catch and the finally here. So I'll make the request. I check the status. I then display an appropriate message if it's not 200. Otherwise, I'd play an, uh, display an appropriate message if it's successful. I actually am parsing the JSON data, which doesn't matter here. Now I log out the errors inside of the catch. And then inside of the finally, I say that this failed just in case it did. So I've actually covered my basis inside of this part when it comes to the code. Now, one of the things that people mentioned is that the API endpoint that I'm making a call to should recognize that this is an invalid newsletter ID. And I agree, but there's another level to this with even more bugs. So if we look into the API endpoint, basically what I'm doing is trying to reverse engineer how Podia handles newsletters. 
So if we look on my landing page on Podia, which is how, where I have all of my email and newsletters, if we look into the code for the email signup that they give you, this is a drag and drop, no code editor. We can look inside of the form and we can see that this sends a request to email list slash 65,004. And then it tells you where it came from with the subscriptions property up here. So what I did was reverse engineer to send that request to that URL and then pass in that newsletter ID here. Now you would think that Podia would respond back if that newsletter ID was incorrect. And I actually did find that it, that it does that. So when I make that request to Podia, so when I get that response, I check the status for a status of 404, which is what Podia should respond back with if that newsletter doesn't exist. And I was handling that scenario. So if that was the case, I responded back with a status of 404 and included the message of couldn't find that newsletter. So I was covering my basis as well. So inside of my code, I thought I was handling all scenarios for bad requests. So I looked for a status of 404. I could send a specific error message for that. I also looked for a status that wasn't a 200 and sent an error for that. But what I found is that Podia was not actually handling the subscribe, but sending back a 200. And that is extremely annoying because this was also very hard to find. So one of the things that confused me is in testing, I would run this and then I would type in my email and this would all seem to work. But if I go over to the Podia tab and search for that user, there's no user inside of here with that email. So I couldn't figure out what was going on and I decided to try to log out the data that it returns. So I got the data from the response. So we await the res.json and then I tried to log that data out. Now what I found was really interesting. Let me pull up the log so we can have this. So again, Podia is not responding with a bad request code but if I then come in here and try to process that information as JSON, I get back something talking about form.m is not valid JSON. So what if it's text? Then I looked at it this way. Okay, let's look at the text. So let's try this again. All right, let's see what that text actually says. Well, this is some sort of jQuery looking thing. And in here, it talks about invalid turnstile response. I then had to go and search for this invalid turn style response. And basically what I found is this is some sort of server side validation that takes into account a widget on the front end that does checks against spam prevention, I think. So I actually had multiple issues in here. So if I would have been making a subscribe request to a newsletter that didn't exist, I would have expected to get back a 404, which would have worked correctly if Podia had handled this correctly. So instead of sending back a 200, they sent they should have sent back some sort of error message for me to know and be able to handle that appropriately. But because they were sending back this jQuery text and not an actual error message, I didn't actually handle the error because I couldn't account for it because they gave me a status of 200. So I go back to a few different issues that I had inside of this API endpoint. The first thing that I found out is that this was lowercase and not uppercase. That was an easy fix as I had just gone through the migration from Astro 2 to 3 in the past. Then as I looked into this, I saw that I had that extra bracket inside of here. Now again, that issue should have been caught if Podia responded correctly with a 404 or some other type of status message. But because they then respond back with a 200, even though the subscribe didn't work, I've been missing subscribers for about eight months and I didn't have any idea. So some things that I could have done, one, I would like to add testing to my site to make sure that these URLs are what I expect them to be. So had I done a simple test of when I generate this URL, it should look like this. That would have given me an extra opportunity to see that I had that typo and hopefully make that correction. Now, other people mentioned I could have used the actual URL object inside of JavaScript as well. And I think one big thing would be to not mix the variable interpolation right inside of the string because that made this particular bug hard to catch because it looks just like part of the regular string. Now, the last thing I've decided to do is on my site, since I can't get around the fact that Podia is not responding back appropriately and I can't get around their turnstile error right now, I've decided to just redirect the user over to the Podia page, which handles the subscribe. Now, this is not ideal for me because I would rather people, people stay on my domain, but I wanted to make this work at least to start so that I'm not losing subscribers in the meantime.
So let this be a lesson that the little mistakes in your code can make a big difference. For me, that meant eight months of missing out on subscribers on my website, which are people that I could have marketed my courses and other things to along the way. Now, if you're interested in any more of my content, make sure to subscribe at jamesqquick.com slash newsletter, or you can go to the homepage and just scroll down to the bottom. It should be working now. If you have any issues, send me a message and I will gladly get them fixed. So I hope you enjoyed this little deep dive into the bug that I found in my code. I hope you don't make similar mistakes in yours and that you don't miss out on money along the way. Hope you enjoyed the video and I'll catch you next time.